You've done uh, quite a quite a lot of uh, gun cases and gun rights cases, Second Amendment cases, and uh, but of course we want to focus a little bit, at least initially here, on your work uh, with stun gun bans. Uh, because that actually, at least in my estimation, I think any fair observer's estimation has been the practical legacy to this point of the Heller decision, the Heller and McDonald decisions, uh, because you it's really the stun gun bans are the only policy you've seen systematically dismantled uh, in the wake of those two major Second Amendment decisions. Right. Uh, is that is that fair to say? I mean, the, how many cases? Yeah, have you done? Say, yes. how, how many cases have you uh, done how many laws have you had uh, overturned at this point? Um, for uh, stun guns, we've um, overturned four statewide laws. Um, that's uh, New Jersey, New York, Hawaii, and Rhode Island. And then we've had several uh, municipal city laws that we've overturned. And that was a uh, uh, and some of those were done by uh, litigation. Some of those were just simply after we started winning, uh, we uh, sent out pre-trial um, demand letters. And so that was uh, New Orleans and Annapolis. Uh, we and that's in uh, Maryland and uh, you know Louisiana, uh, respectively. We uh, actually filed lawsuits. They just threw in the towel shortly afterwards. And then we had Westminster, Maryland, Tacoma. Washington and Philadelphia, we uh, sent demand letters. Uh, Look, we're already winning. Um, Turn in, uh, here's a letter. We're going to file suit unless you um, unless you uh, repeal them in those cities. So five total. Those three cities, they just got rid of their laws after we uh, uh, sent those demand letters. So four cities, uh, four states and five cities. Right. So this is pretty systematic the way that you've gone about uh, addressing these bans. And there there hasn't been any other sort of policy like that just wiped off uh, you know, the, the slate here. I mean, obviously, Heller was directly about Washington, D.C.'s handgun ban, and then McDonald was directly about Chicago, Illinois' handgun ban, and those were wiped out. But there really weren't a lot of those types of policies uh, out there. They were really outliers. And, so, and you just haven't seen that level of uh, systematic change from these landmark Second Amendment rulings, uh, except for these these stun gun cases. So how were you able to have that sort of uh, effect? And I mean, I, what was the mechanism that allowed you to, to really have success like this? Well, I, I had uh, initially studied uh, the uh, uh, issue of tasers about, um, uh, with actually my first case, uh, Baker v. Kealoha, which was, we filed in 2011, but we just didn't, uh, we decided, and that was a carry case, and we were thinking about doing a a taser action as well, but just didn't really get a lot of headway. So uh, I'd studied a lot of uh, Eugene Volok's uh, work, and uh, he is the academic that uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time, um, you know, uh, studying why these things are unconstitutional, why stun gun and taser bans don't make sense. And uh, I also, um, uh, you know, I got quite a bit of advice from um, attorney uh, George Lyon, who is an attorney out in uh, the District of Columbia. He filed a uh, case uh, called um, uh, Crystal V. Wright. And, uh, you know, um, between those, I, I, I know both of them personally. And, uh, you know, um, and uh, I'd worked on it. And then after the Jamie Satano decision, I um, we went and uh, saw that this was a situation that was ripe for uh, litigation. So, and uh, in the Saitano case, what happened is the Massachusetts Supreme Court decided to um, uphold a ban on stun guns, and they did so uh, based upon the reasoning that um, the uh, that uh, stun guns were not round at the founding of our country in 1791. Right. And that's just completely against uh, Heller and just the wide body of constitutional jurisprudence because, um, you know, I mean, obviously, it, to take that logic, I mean, they didn't have, um, you know, the internet. And, uh, you know, even a lot of modern forms of printing, you know, just uh, um, 
you know, could arguably be um, uh, prohibited. If you want to take the reasoning that something had been around in 1791 in order to uh, be a constitutionally protected under, you know, the First Amendment. And, you know, the Supreme Court expressly stated in Heller that uh, this is not a, um, you know, just some sort of archaic uh, amendment. I mean, this is something that uh, has modern relevance. And, uh, you know, there's a specific passage that's uh, almost it's directly on point. And so the Saitano decision, what the Supreme Court did in a two-page per curiam opinion, that means by the entire court, it was unsigned and in a happy unanimous per curiam decision, the court said uh, that, no, you got to go redo it, you know, and look at your reasoning again, because uh, it's not dispositive. Just because something's not around 1791, that's not dispositive. They're not protected by the Second Amendment. So while, and then in a uh, concurrence, that's a concurrence is where uh, a, a judge agrees with the outcome, but has his own take on things. Um, Justice Alito um, wrote a concurrence, I, I believe, joined by Justice Thomas, um, where he um, said, uh, yeah, these are absolutely protected. But that but that concurrence wasn't binding upon the court, just on the lower courts, just the um, all the, the court's per curiam decision, which said, hey, you have to go redo this and uh, redo your um, legal reasoning. And even though in th the court could have said, hey, um, we're redoing it, we're applying, you know, we're upholding this ban based upon legal reasoning you might agree with, you know, I thought that the fact the Supreme Court had pretty strongly indicated that it believes that uh, electric arms, stun guns, and tasers are protected was enough to really take what I'd done back in 2011 and then build upon it significantly in order to uh, start a number of um, uh, lawsuits. Yeah. So that that 2016 Supreme Court opinion, where there was a unanimous opinion, right, uh, that essentially said Massachusetts Supreme Court was wrong, that modern technology is protected under the Second Amendment, uh, that obviously the case dealt directly with stun guns and tasers. Um, that really was a catalyst for your efforts. Yes. Uh, really, it, it enhanced what you were what you were already yeah, doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we wouldn't have died in this most recent push if not for the Supreme Court's um, 2016 opinion. 